Welcome back. Today we're here in the spring woods. It's going to be a warm day today, about 28 Celsius. I'm just scoping out some new uh, foraging areas and enjoying the sounds of spring. Today I can hear some geese and red-winged blackbirds and the, uh, the little frogs have started croaking. Here grouse behind me as well. <laughs> this is awesome. What a day. So today uh, I'm wearing just a t-shirt and uh, my nice waterproof pants and I've got these awesome hikers I've had for about three months now. They're the Under Armour uh, hiking boots and I really love them. Let's take a look. So they are completely waterproof and uh, you guys know that I get really uncomfortable in um, hikers and these had absolutely no uh, break-in period so I've worn them at minus five um, up to you know well plus 25 and they're really really comfortable they're very breathable and I can lace them up all the way with no pain and I can go in puddles and I don't get wet and a bonus is they have a really nice heel lots of cushioning there so they are the HOVR uh, Under Armour boots love them and I picked these ones up at Cabela's not too far in on the trail here and I can see a snake look at hibernation how cool is that and the pussy willows are out I just love this such a nice sign of spring so just looking at the ground everything's still just just freshly uh, snow melted this week so a lot of stuff from last year out and about but uh, right now we're in, actually in the woods for another purpose too we are working on training for morel hunting I'm training Royce to find mushrooms for me so he is uh, in level 4 scent training right now we're actually gonna be doing a Indian Kennel Club trial uh, come you know May for uh, container search and uh, indoor uh, search and now we're working on our outdoor searching capabilities so I kind of want to show you how we go about doing that here today here we are in a snowier area of the woods and Royce couldn't be happier <laughs> Ooh, it feels nice and cool in here he's just way overheated in this kind of weather poor guy here is a beautiful hepatica flower lovely to see again they have purple and white flowers sometimes lovely to see the forest starting to bloom again. And the warblers are back. It's so beautiful to be in these pine forests and hear the pine warbler. Isn't that cool? You guys can hear that, uh, you know, in that clip there. A lot of birders out, you know, looking for their bucket list birds this year. So that's really cool. Nice, cool water. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of fungus out in the forest now, but uh, we do have some fresh growth on one of these little shelf fungi. Oh yeah, he's checking it out. <laughs> Gotta get him interested. So he's been in training, uh, for scent training since the fall. And uh, let's discuss how we started doing that. This is a very low cost sport. So how I started um, is basically you buy a bunch of these little um, Tupperware type boxes. I get them in the dollar store. Um, grocery store or whatever um, they have to have a lid on them and I've modified the lid to have a little hole in them and how they start them on the scent training is to actually get them you know you put up 10 of these little boxes on the floor with the lids all off of them and you get them to check each box and in one of the boxes you put your dog's most favorite treat like liver steak whatever a little piece of that in there and at the same time you also put a target odor that you're actually wanting to work with them to find so in his case uh, we started with was a cocktail of scents that will be used you know in formal trials like wintergreen anise clove pine for example and they're all kind of dotted on a q-tip in a little straw so you can see in this box here has the little straws in there with the q-tip in the center and smells like basically wintergreen or just like a cocktail of lovely essential oils in there and their essential oils have a really strong smell and so there's a cocktail on here and then uh, what we're going to do in this little box is take the lid off and put a treat in there so there you go. You start with a bunch of these little boxes, like 10 or whatever. Uh, you have your target odor that they will be identifying by itself in the future, but for now, they're associating uh, a really good reward for sticking their heads in boxes. And uh, so this is like starting a container search, for example. Uh, eventually, we'll take them out of the containers, but this is the easiest thing to start with them. Uh, and then when they get to the box that has the prize in it, they also at the same time realize they get a reward uh, when they smell the cocktail of smells. So, I mean, for the dogs, they can smell each individual smell. You can smell the wintergreen, the clove, the pine, essential oil. You can separate them out in his head. We can't. It just smells like, you know, essential oils to us. But uh, they can, their, their nose is so much better than ours, they can identify them. So uh, let's show you how it works. So they typically start out on a six foot leash and then you kind of get them focused on the project. I'm gonna present to him what we're looking for. 
I'm going to get him to check stuff. Okay, go find it. Yes, good boy. And I use the marker. Yes, when he gets to it, and he'll eat his little treats in there. Like I said, you have multiples of these boxes out. I didn't do that. Um, we're just going to have him find the one for now, just for demonstration purposes. But you lay them out kind of in a circle or a straight line, and you walk slowly. You can use your hand to kind of, you know, point out what they need to be checking. And of course, when they find the right one, use your marker word, your clicker, whatever, and they will get the treat inside the box. Eventually, you want to put the lids on. So the recommendation is... So the recommendation is to feed them through the box lid. Yes. Yes. So as soon as they touch it and they're not afraid of it, they will put their face on that. And eventually, you put your treats in there. <laughs> you put the lid on. So they smell the food and whatever smell you want. Okay, Royce. Go find it. Yes. And then you feed them on top of the box for him holding his nose on there. And the next step is you have a box in it without any uh, treats. Yes. Good boy. So there you go. He went to it and he put his face on it. So I gave him the reward. And the next level is you're going to take this little straw with your essential oil or your target odor, whatever you want to train them on. Uh, and you're going to just use this. You're not going to use the box or anything like that. I usually present the odor to the dog, what we're looking for. I've hidden it here in this environment. Ready? Go find it. So now he's going to go looking around and sniff everything. I'll put it on the ground for an easy search and stick it to a tree or whatever. Definitely searching right now. I'm not going to distract them. When they stop searching, you can uh, get their attention and redirect them. This is one of his first times doing exterior search. So interior is really easy. There's nothing distracting like pee or wildlife or stinky things unthawed from the winter. There's also different air currents, easier inside than outside. Because you want to start upwind of an odor when you're outside. Let's check in the container. You can smell the residual. Find another. Yes, good boy. You, good Burke, yay! That was awesome. I was really impressed. He kind of got off track a little bit, but I didn't distract him, let him do his work. And he found the original container because there was residual in there. If you get stuff on your hands and they can smell it in the box still. Um, and then he actually found what I wanted to look for exterior wise. So that's really good. So that's really hard to do exterior searches. Um, so today we're going to just sort of work with them a little bit to uh, try to find mushroom scent. So that's why I want to start training now because morels will be out next month. Good boy. Okay, so here we are. I've got some rehydrated morels, rehydrated chanterelles, and a hedgehog mushroom. Things I'll be looking for, you know, in the next three months. So kind of like the Q-tip with multiple essential oils, we have multiple scents here. I'm going to put them all together, and eventually, you know, he'll be able to find each one individually. He can smell each of these mushrooms individually. They have their own distinct odor. And uh, but for now, we're going to be doing it in a container outside. I was told by his trainer to start with containers outside because that's what he knows really well. He knows to search them. So we'll work with that and then kind of like we did with the essential oil Q-tip, we take it out eventually. So I'm going to put like a little mushroom on the ground uh, or in a little glass jar with holes poked out the top. Uh, we'll kind of graduate down to that level. So hopefully he will just be able to detect uh, the mushroom on the ground as is. So you guys know morel mushrooms are super hard to find this time of year. They're brown. Uh, the leaves are all brown and gross. So really difficult to find, you know, versus chanterelles or hedgehogs. But I want to be able to help me out on our little forays. So let's see how he does with this. So I'm just showing him the odor here. Yeah, good boy. Yes, good boy. All right, so let's see. Right over here. He's over there. Okay, go find it. Go find it. distracted here. Hey Royce, go find it. You can also point, get him to look at the ground, tell him what we're doing. He's hot and tired, so it's probably not the best time to do this. There he goes. Go find it. Just gonna 
redirect them here a little bit. Not a terribly windy day. So you might think, oh, he's good. He's, what he's doing, he's searching the tree because he knows I do put things vertically. It's on the ground now. Yes, good boy, you did it, yay, good work. Oh, I know, it was a little stressful. You got off track there. Go find it. And one more little search around here. Probably helpful if I had him on a leash for this part, but it may not be realistic reward conditions when we're training him. Yes, oh, he's getting the hang of this. Just feed him there. Great, this is working well. This might be a shot in the dark, but let's see if he'll do this. Okay. Just gonna put it close by. Let's see what he does. Sit. Sit. I need a starting routine so I can figure out his attention. Okay, go find it. Where is to go find it? Okay. Go find it. Find it. But I'm close to it. Well, it's kind of a weak indicator, but I'll give that to you. <laughs> yeah, he's hot, he's tired, he's starting to lose focus. But it's really, really, really hard and exhausting for them to work outside. So many smells, so many things going on. Uh, and he's trying to figure out what I, you know, what I'm trying to do with them. He knows the, you know, the essential oils and things. But now this is a brand new smell to him. This is one of the first times he's ever been exposed to this. So uh, we'll keep working on it. I might try, you know working with a leash, like a six foot leash in a really small area. Um, and then uh, maybe when it's a little bit cooler, like I said, today's a really hot day, shockingly hot actually for the time of year. So that might affect his performance. So we're gonna give it a bit of a break now, but I just wanna show you guys that's how I do it. That's how I got him scent trained. Um, he does really, really well in class. I mean, you can find things in a room off leash literally within 30 seconds to a minute. So he's very fast and he's really fast on containers as well, even with distractions. At the higher levels, they will put food in containers um, as well as one with just the essential oil Q-tip. They have to mark only the essential oil, not the food. Um, and you're graded on your handling and uh, your dog's signaling efforts. So uh, it's a really challenging but very fun sport. Uh, something that you guys should get into. It's really fun if you have a dog that loves nose work. It exhausts them. He'll go home and have like a crazy nap today. Um, and uh, it's good to work them out mentally and physically too. You don't want to just work them out physically. You'll have an athlete on your hands if that's what you want. Go for it. But you got to work out their little brain too. So anyways, thanks so much for joining me in the forest today, guys. Beautiful day, uh, seeing some of our old woodland friends back from the winter slumbers. And uh, I hope you guys get out there and enjoy it. It's supposed to be beautiful weather for the next little while, at least here. Have a great week. We'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.